Okay, so we're continuing to work our way down the channel strip. So we started with our gain knob, we did our high pass, low pass filter. So the next thing you're gonna see as you go down that channel strip are these multiple knobs, sometimes different colors, but it's EQ. Yeah. So it used to be that you just had maybe a low mid high or yeah. a low high or a simple application. Yeah. Nowadays, especially on digital consoles, we've got fully sweepable, four band parametric EQ. So some guys look at that and they're intimidated because yeah. they don't understand what all that is. So what was the first time you like really started to unlock what EQ really is and yeah. what it is that I'm actually hearing? Yeah, well the first time I heard the word equalizer was in my dad's 87 Monte Carlo. Yes. Yeah, he had an equalizer ghetto bolted as to the bottom on. as an add-on oh, yes. in his car. And Smiley all, face, baby. <laughs> and all I knew was equalizers made it sound better. That's all. Yeah. So That's awesome. So then, honestly, when I start doing sound in high school, playing in bands, I thought of it like a car stereo, kind of like bass and treble. And for that, if you think about bass and treble, it's kind of like bass and treble. You can boost Smiley and you face. can cut the bass and the treble, right? Yeah. But then you start running into things like parametric EQ, like graphic EQ, and there are all these different types of EQ. So this yeah. is a parametric EQ. And now I can boost specific bands and I can narrow how much of those, right? And cut and take away. That's great. Another light bulb happened in band, in music. Yeah. When you start learning music theory and they start talking about octaves and C, middle C is 440. No, 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 no. It's not C440. It's A440. Lee's awesome. He is the best looking one in the group. That's kind of why he's here. But he did spend a large part of his life growing up in Tennessee. What do you expect? He's been duly admonished. He understands the chromatic scale. He gets it. Carry on with the video. Enjoy. And then someone says, did you know an octave higher than 440 is 880. Light bulb moment, right there it was. It was like, oh yeah. my gosh, are you telling me that 440 somewhere in there and 880 somewhere in there, wherever, are octaves of each other? And they are. So then when you take that principle and apply it to what we know of EQ, low to high, it's a much more musical tool than it yeah. is just math. Right. Which it can be both. It's good. And we talk about trying to, you know, we talk about sometimes people try to fix their mix here, but sometimes that means they're trying to fix their room. They're trying to fix a badly mic'd instrument. They're sometimes they're trying to fix a, uh, somebody who's got a vocal and they're on the wrong mic or something. You said musical, this becomes a musical tool. Yeah. It's really good to remember that your EQ if you're using it to fix all your problems, I don't mean like correcting some feedback or something. I mean trying right. to correct all your problems with we didn't noise treat the room or something. Right. Sometimes you might need to go a little farther in another area and let your EQ still be your musical EQ. Yeah, yeah. Let it actually tune the instrument. Let it tune the vocal. Let it tune the, the tool you're using to mic a guitar amp and be musical. Right. It's part of the musical chain. It's more like a surgical tool to find the nuance and the resonance and the what's special about each right. input right. rather than a sledgehammer that tries to just yeah. hack away and at every I'll tell you what's problem. good, and this is something I do now. I mean, mixing for 25, 30 years. If you, if you go in there, Lee, and you find that this input needs a little less 2.5K, so you would just drop that out a little bit that's kind of some high mid that might be a little annoying in the vocal range or something. Yeah. Something that's good to do, go through all of your inputs every once in a while. If you're finding that every single input has 2.5K notched, right. ding, 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 another light bulb moment, go to your system EQ and deal with, your, deal yeah. with it there. That's good. And let this put some of the music back into those inputs. What about things like this? Should I, should I EQ things like super wide or should I like, is this effective? Talk to me about that. I think, 
I think I this, need to get my bifocals. And yeah. In this <laughs> specific that. example, I yeah. think, well, the first thing I would say is... I see a lot of inputs in churches that look like this, okay? Maybe like that. Yeah. Right. So I would say, first, use your ears, not your eyes. Because I think something that's notched that narrow is maybe doing less to the overall tonality than you think it is. Yeah. Yep. I Agreed. would say maybe err on the side of a little bit wider. Um, but if there is a specific frequency that needs to be notched that surgically, then again, I think there's a system issue that yeah. you, could, you could fix it somewhere else. Right. And, and here's a great way to do it too. When you walk in and see those guys that have this thing you know, narrow, sometimes I'll do that in a hurry and then I'll look at it and go, you know what? I wonder if I can actually even hear it if I do that. Right. So many times I can't even tell that it's there because I've got the thing so narrowed down. And so then I'm like, what, what's it even doing? So forget it. I'll put it back in there and realize that... You didn't even need it. I didn't even need it in the first place. Yeah. But speaking of that, what you just did, I think for guys who are beginners and don't quite understand how which frequencies correspond to which notes, doing that is a great way great to sort way. of find where the problematic frequencies are. So it's a, an approach that I would call seek and destroy. Yeah. So let's say we, we have a problem in that mid range. You can find it you this way. You can find it this way. Find exactly what the frequency is by boosting it at a narrow width. And sweeping through it. Sweep through till you find that one that's on the verge of feeding back and then take some Kill of it out. I don't like that one. Okay. I don't either. So let's just take some of that out. And then once you get it out, maybe widen the cue just a little bit so that it's a little more musical, a, yep. little, a little broader, because you're affecting a little bit of what's right around it. And then, you know, you have something that works. Don't do that in the middle of a performance or a service. <laughs> <laughs> no, Ever. this is for your own time or during a rehearsal or for your own learning. Yeah. Um, but it really helps you identify like, okay, what is 2K? What is 400? Right. What is, what is that low mid thing, that kind of weird mud what is that and how can I help get rid of it? And I say this a lot. Um, sometimes the best way to learn that, we're doing that with pink noise, sometimes it's with your own voice. Yeah. Use a microphone at your own console in, the, in an empty room That's and a go, great idea. let me learn what my voice, because you hear it all the time, what does it sound like being adjusted like this? So kind of a cool idea to get started on EQ. That's great. 